Ashto T2 sampling of aggregates covers sampling of coarse and fine aggregates to be used as a supply source or in quality control or quality assurance testing. Procedures are described for obtaining samples from a flowing aggregate stream, conveyor belt, stockpiles or transport units, and from the roadway. Sample sizes for routine quality tests are found in Table 1. The column on the left represents the nominal maximum size of the aggregate specified. The column on the right represents the minimum size of the field sample in kilograms. For a fine aggregate sample, the size of the field sample is always a minimum of 10 kilograms. As you can see here, the field sample size increases with the nominal maximum size of the aggregate. For routine tests such as sieve analysis, use this table to determine how much material you should obtain for your field sample. In order to ensure the representative nature of the material, the mass of the field sample is significantly larger than that which will be needed for testing. Now, let's discuss the various locations from which you might obtain your sample. We'll begin with sampling from a flowing aggregate stream. Use a random number standard, such as ASTM D3665, to select the times to collect the sample increments. Select a sample container that is large enough to pass through the entire cross-section of the stream and hold all of the material without overflowing. Take care that no material is lost when transferring the sample to the container. Use a transfer device when necessary. Use a brush to collect all of the fines. Combine at least three approximately equal increments to make your field sample. When sampling from a flowing aggregate stream or a conveyor belt, to avoid segregation, it is important that the bins feeding the belt are kept full or nearly full. Also, avoid sampling both the initial discharge and the final few tons. Next, we'll obtain a sample from a conveyor belt. First, ensure your safety by cutting power to the belt. Follow the lockout procedure so only you are authorized to restore power. Restore the power only after you have obtained the sample and have determined that all personnel and equipment are clear of the conveyor. Obtain permission to gain access to restricted areas. For this procedure, you will need a device consisting of two templates the shape of which conforms to the shape of the belt. These templates should be spaced far enough apart to yield enough material for one of the sample increments. A scoop for collecting material from the belt. A brush and dustpan for collecting all of the fines from the belt. A transfer device may also be needed. Place the templates across the full width and through the full depth of the material. Scoop the material into the container or the transfer device. Be careful not to contaminate or lose any of the sample. Once the bulk of the sample has been removed from the belt, use a brush and a dustpan to collect all of the remaining fines. Be sure to collect all of the material between the templates. Carefully transfer the material to the sample container. Be sure to collect all of the fines. Make sure that your sample container will not contaminate or lose any part of the sample. Take care to protect containers from damage during transport. When sampling from a stockpile, the use of power equipment to make a smaller sampling pile is preferred. This will help reduce the effects of segregation that commonly occur in large stockpiles. First, have the loader operator obtain several buckets of material from various levels and locations of the main stockpile. These increments will be placed in a separate location for the smaller sampling pile. After all of the locations from the main pile have been collected, the loader will then remix the material from all sides of the smaller sampling pile. Once the material is uniformly mixed, the loader will drag the bucket across the surface of the smaller sampling pile. From this flattened area, collect several approximately equal increments and combine them to form the field sample. It is not necessary to remove the surface layer before collecting each increment when this procedure is followed. Label the sample with all relative information for its intended use. 
transport the sample in a container that will prevent loss or contamination. Now, let's discuss sampling directly from the stockpile. Remember, sampling from a stockpile should generally be avoided whenever possible. This is particularly important when the purpose of the sample is for testing which is influenced by the grading of the sample. Sampling directly from the stockpile should only be done if power equipment is not available. When it is necessary to sample directly from the stockpile, a sampling plan should be developed that all involved parties can follow. This plan should be developed to enable representative samples to be collected. When sampling from the stockpile, samples should be made up of at least three increments. Take these increments from the top, middle, and bottom thirds of the volume of the pile. When collecting each increment, shove a barrier vertically down into the pile just above where the increment is to be taken. Just below the barrier, remove the outer layer of material that may have become segregated and collect the sample using a shovel. The barrier should prevent the outer layer of the stockpile from falling down into the shovel while collecting the increment. Do this at each location of the stockpile that you sample. Be sure to attach or include a label with all of the sample's information. A fine aggregate stockpile, such as sand, should be sampled at random locations throughout the stockpile. You are required to collect at least five increments from different locations of the stockpile. At each location, scrape away the outer surface of the pile first. Sampling tubes for fine aggregates must conform to the specifications found in section 1.2.2 of the appendix. Minimum dimensions are 30 millimeters in diameter by two meters in length. After removing the outer layer, insert the tube into the pile. This is best accomplished by shoving the tube into the pile horizontally. This will prevent the material from falling out of the tube as it is removed. Next, clean off the outside of the tube and then empty the contents into the sample container. Be sure to attach or include a label with all of the sample's information. Make sure that your container will protect the sample from contamination or loss of any part of the sample. For more details on the most recent specifications, consult the latest AASHTO publication, which may be ordered by calling 202-624-5800 or online at transportation.org.